Hey everyone, welcome to another video. What if I were to give you this particular prompt and you get this output out? Is this good enough in 2024? Or maybe you get this one, or maybe this one, or maybe you're going to go out and grab your awesome workflow with 200 plus nodes, and then you come up with a 4K, high resolution, highly detailed image. And what if I tell you that this 4K, super highly detailed image is not good enough. This is OpenAI Sora, a text to video model. And look at the detail. Look at the detail, the skin, the reflection. This is absolutely amazing. Sora is an AI model and it's advertised as creator realistic imaginative scenes and goes on it's even text to video model it can generate video up to one minute long maintaining the quality and the consistency and you can see this was the video i showed you earlier we have the prompt there prompt goes into the ai out comes a one minute video as another example this one it is about mammoth in snowy terrain one more example this one is about a movie trailer so it understand what is a movie trailer and if you were to look at this you would think that this is a drone shot a couple more example this one is paper craft underwater real life fish and sea creation you can also do portrait mode but if we look carefully if we know what we are looking for you can see that some of the frames they are not realistic if you look at the right ship you can see there but if you were to see these videos on instagram twitter if you do not know what you're looking for you totally think that it's real it's made by people and it will only get better if we take chat gpt it will only get better and better and this one is absolutely beautiful if i were to see this on twitter i would think that this is from a flagship game release in 2024 this is really difficult to generate from an ai we have the camera following the suv now if we look at the website it talks about the safety and it talks a little bit about how the text classifier rejects input if we have these type of content in there also goes into the research paper telling you a little bit how it works so if you're interested i will have a link in the description where you can read more on this However, one thing that OpenAI does not do is open source the model. They always go about security and trying to control how people are using the model. Let's take a look at DALI, ChatGPT. They are awesome tools, but we don't have access to the model itself. Google, however, is releasing Gemini 1.5 and they call it 1.5 Pro, where developers will get access to the model in production so they will be able to use it in production and this one can take up to 1 million tokens now i'm not sure if they are exaggerating the numbers here but we've seen 128,000 tokens 200,000 tokens but now 1 million tokens and from a large language model this is really good if it can deliver and this one was gemini 1.5 next let's come back to comfy ui and a couple of Comfy UI skin or launchers. This one is Comfy UI Launcher. It's basically running Comfy UI workload without any setup. It's advertised as without zero setup. If you scroll down, we can see a couple of features, basically automatically installing custom nodes. The, we have workflow exports and open multiple Comfy UI workflows and so on. There's a video demonstrating how it works and it's based on comfy ui manager you, if we if we scroll down you will see that it gives credit to comfy ui manager to install those missing custom nodes pretty similar you can see a uh, comfy ui launcher pretty much like comfy ui but multiple workflows at the same time there's instruction on how to use docker for manual installation and the installation is quite simple just git clone and start it and here's the credit to comfy ui manager so this one was comfy ui launcher now next we have comfy ui studio and the name is a little bit confusing because it says comfy ui studio but if we check the description it's basically 
just an improvement on how to manage models. So it can categorize the different models based on tags. We have the workflows and these are the models. And then we can use that workflow in our Coffee UI. And you can see there's a Luda model manager, thumbnail shielding, or there's naughty models, automatic model labeling. It can also match workflow with particular model or model with workflow and then support Chinese as well as English. There's instruction on how to use this studio. Super easy. Keep in mind that it works with a couple of supported loaders. Here's the list. And here's another one. Kong. It's Confluent Space. I always confuse the name with Comfy Space. But this one is Confluent Space. And it's probably the most visually appealing skin for Comfy UI. It's again an open source AI front end for Comfy UI and it gives better interactive experience than the default Comfy UI. If you take a look at this screen, this is basically what it does. We have the workflow, the, we can explore the different images that we've generated. And here's an example of how it looks. So you can see we have a simple key sampler here and the buttons, the drop down is better in terms of styling. Here's the positive from load control neck model. We have the input image. Even the empty latent image is visually better than the default comfy one. At the top, we can see that we have multiple workflows it's arranged in different tabs. So this was Confluy space. I gave it a try. It worked with simple workflows. At the moment, I had complex workflows with recent nodes. It crashed. This is still a work in progress. If you'd like to try it, it's available. Give it a try and maybe report any bugs that you find. Now, next, a couple of custom nodes by the community. And this one is Comfy UI Poultry Master. Its main use is to generate human poultry using these sliders. And basically what it's doing, it's whenever you add or increase a particular slider, it will add that slider to your prompt. So it will add dry face 0.5 to your prompt as a positive prompt. And there are a couple of examples. You can see it's pretty straightforward to use. So instead of you typing small eyes, you can just select it from the slider there. And here's another one by Zoo Zoo Zoo. And again, he's going to call it as the unofficial implementation. Basically, it's just a wrapper. And this one is you the world, the efficient Sam. And it's a masking technique that can detect different subjects. And you can see here in the example, and basically it's going to create a mask for each individual subject. There we go. So we have a couple of percentage and this goes into the mask here. I'm scrolling down. It's called as the add mask separation feature capable of individually outputting selected mask. And there's an example here, a little bit down. So in this case, we just have a general mask identifying the subject here. And here's a good example of what this can do. So if I zoom in here, we can see that it's looking for hair and jacket as two things that we want to select or mask. And then our default one. So if you have the comfy UI impact back, basically pretty much standard now when it comes to masking. You will get the B box detector, which can detect different subject. And in this case, you can see on the right side, it's detecting the face as well as the hair and then jacket plus the whole body here. But if we go and check the efficiency sound, the yellow version, you can see that it's detecting very closely the jacket and just the hair, not the face. So basically it's a, a better way of masking. We'll have to experiment to see how well it does. Next, we have something related to 3D. And this one, it's called the Comfy UI 3D Pack. It's an extensive node to working with 3D inputs, meshes, and UV texture. And there's a good example down below. Keep in mind that it is a work in progress. Let's check the video. And we can see here that it's a Comfy UI workflow. You just have the nodes that is providing. And the output is a 3D object that can be moved around. So I'm guessing this can be exported to maybe Unity or Godot Game Engine and can be used there or maybe even Blender. And here we can see that it can save and load 3D file as an OBJ and Blender can open OBJ. All right, so if you stayed until the very end of this video, thank you, you're awesome. I will leave you with a bonus. And I think this one is the most 
underrated Comfy UI custom node that we have so far. If you are just starting out with Comfy UI, I think this should be your number two custom node that you install. Number one, of course, being the Comfy UI manager. And this one is Comfy UI Assistant. It's by OpenArt, the place where we upload workflows. And its job is very simple. It's going to give you a search inside of Comfy UI where you can look for workflows. And surprisingly, it only has four stops. To install it, it's very easy. Just search for Comfy UI Assistant and install it from the Comfy UI Manager. Let me give you an example of how to use it. So here I am with the node install. I have a default workflow. And at the bottom, you will see that I have a small magnifying glass. Click on it. It says search for workflows and type in pixel. Let's look for a couple of pixel art workflow. And it gives a pop-up right inside of Comfy UI where I can choose the workflow. And you will see on the right side, I have use workflow. I can click on it saying loading and it loads the workflow right into Comfy UI. I don't have to go download the workflow and load the workflow inside of Comfy UI. I have all the nodes, everything is there. Now, if you want to use it to study and then build your own workflow on top of that, Great, you have the workflow, you can do whatever you want with it. Or if you don't like it, you can search for a new one. In this case, let's try LoRa. Let's look for a workflow that talks about LoRa, basic one. And in this one, we have a note that's great, a bonus telling us how to use LoRa. Now, let's look for something a little bit more complex. I'm going to choose this simple-ish workflow. Again, click on Use Workflow. And here you can see that it's telling me that I'm missing custom node. Click on Close, click on manager just behind me and then click on install missing custom node then install all the missing custom node and simply restart the application and you will get your workflow back it's very simple it's down there it does not take a lot of system requirements basically just a button at this point where you can search for workflows right inside of company UI. all right guys so thank you for watching until the very end i would like to say a big thank you to all of you supporting the channel in any way that you can whether you're liking the video commenting out supporting on patreon or sharing the the video i really appreciate all the support thank you Thank you to all. Have a nice day. I will see you in the next.